Well, uh, here's the problem set for chapter 17. Question 1. Sound wave traveling in 20 degrees Celsius air has a pressure amplitude of 0.5 Pascal. What is the intensity of the wave? Uh, the intensity of the wave is square of the pressure amplitude divided by 2 times the density times the velocity in that medium or in that material. So, and the density of air is 1.20 kilogram per meter cube times the speed of sound is 343 and you get 3.04 negative 4 watt per meter squared. The next one, what sound intensity in decibels is produced by earphones that create an intensity of 4 times 10 to the negative 2. So we got to change from the conventional units of watt per meter squared to decibels and the formula is beta is 10 log i by i naught where i naught is the threshold of hearing it's 10 to the power negative 12 and i is the intensity that's given and when you solve that remember that the 10 to the negative 2 and negative 12 cancel out to give you 10 to the negative 10 in the denominator but when you write it in the numerator it's going to be 10 to the positive 10 and when you take the log of that you get 10.6021 actually 10.60 and then when you multiply it's 106 decibels here again what is the decibel level of a sound that is twice as intense as a 90 decibel sound so twice as intense you know you cannot double the decibel first you'll have to change it into watt per meter squared so we're trying to find the i now with beta given and i set this up as a ratio because in the second case it says it's twice as intense so if it's i here it's 2i next time now since you set it up as a ratio you can uh, uh, before that I've just divided 90 divided by 10 to give you 9 you know from this 90 divided by 10 is 9 so to get rid of the log you write 10 to the power 9 here as I by 10 to the negative 12 that gives I is 10 to the negative 3 because when uh, you know 10 to the negative 12 goes to the side and gets multiplied with this 9 and minus 12 is minus 3 now the second one since you got I already from here you can substitute for I into this as 10 to the negative 3 and go on and find how much it is in decibels that comes out to be 93 decibel right there and the B part says what is the decibel level of a sound that is one-fifth as intense so same procedure one-fifth as intense so take one-fifth of this quantity now 10 to the negative 3 divided by 5 and that comes out to be 0.2 times 10 to the negative 3 times 10 to the 12 that is 83 decibels okay one-fifth is 83 decibels okay the next one an eight-hour exposure to a sound intensity level of 90 decibels may cause hearing damage and what energy in joules falls on a 0 0.8 centimeter diameter eardrum so exposed so the key is you're looking for energy here and this is actually intensity you know the intensity is power divided by area or rather you can go this way energy is power multiplied by time from the definition of power which is energy divided by time okay power is work divided by time 
work is nothing but energy so energy is power multiplied by time but yet power is intensity times the area so you get this and uh, where did I get that from you know we've seen that 90 decibels is 10 to the negative 3 watt per meter squared just in the last problem take a glimpse take a look 90 decibel there was 10 to the negative 3 right so that's what I've used here so I don't want to do that again so I 80 and uh, this is 90 decibel is 10 to the negative 3 and uh, the area is that of a circle which is pi r squared because the the surface on which it falls on the eardrum is circular so that's pi times radius squared of that times 8 oh, times 8 times 3600 because it's 8 hours you got to change it into seconds and you get 1.45 times 10 to the negative 3 joules well, this is talking about using a stethoscope and it's a big problem. Please read it and it says that sound is transmitted into, into a stethoscope 100 times as effectively compared with uh, direct transmission through the air. And the, what then is the gain in decibels produced by a stethoscope that has a sound gathering area? of 15 centimeters squared okay so that's the area at the end of the stethoscope that touches the chest of the patient and at the other end the area is smaller it is much smaller in fact 0 0.9 centimeter squared that's what goes into the doctor's ears and the efficiency is 40 percent so we're assuming that you know in in practice, all the energy of sound from the patient's chest will not get to the doctor's ears. Only 40% gets there. So that's the idea. Now setting this up as a ratio, I2 by I1 is 100 times 40%, which is 0.4. 15 centimeter squared. Here you need not change in a meter squared because both are in centimeter squared. So it's a ratio. It doesn't matter. You get this as 666.67, that's the ratio. And then you got to find the gain. Gain means how much bigger it is. Okay, so that would be 10 log I2 by I0. Remember that that is the intensity in decibels at the doctor's ears minus the intensity in decibels when it starts off from the patient's chest but yet you know log a minus log b is log a divided by b so you have log a minus log b which is written as log a divided by b of course 10 is common here so i2 by i1 we already got it as 666.67 so you just plug it in you get 28.2 decibels taking us to the next one which is from doppler effect this time what frequency is received by a person watching an oncoming ambulance moving at 110 kilometers per hour so the observer or the listener is not moving the source of sound is moving at 110 kilometers per hour. It's oncoming, so it's approaching the listener. Therefore, the frequency, the perceived frequency is going to be higher. And from the formula, we know that in the numerator, we have the velocity. I mean, in the denominator, you have the velocity of the source. And because it's going to be higher, you're going to have to subtract right in the denominator but before that you got to change the kilometers per hour into meter per second multiply by 5 divide by 18 because of the thousand meters that make a kilometer and 3600 that seconds that make an hour so it just simplifies to 5 over 18 and then 
This is the formula for Doppler effect. The frequency heard by the observer is the actual frequency of the source times velocity of the wave plus or minus velocity of the listener, which is zero in this case. So that's why it's missing. And in the denominator, it could either be minus or plus. But here, because we know that this has to be higher than this, we know that this ratio must be greater than 1 which means in the denominator it should be minus the velocity of the source. So 800 times 345 by 345 minus 30.56. On solving that you get 878 hertz. And it says in the B part, what frequency does she receive after the ambulance has passed? Now what happened in this case is the source is going away from the listener and when the source goes away the perceived frequency is going to be less so if this is going to be less uh, then uh, in the denominator you're going to add instead of subtracting that's all so once again same thing except that's the difference it's 345 plus 30.56 and when you solve that, you get 734.9 hertz. Okay, round it off so to 735. Now, the next one says, what frequency is received by a mouse just before being dispatched by a hawk flying at it at 25 meters per second? Okay, so the mouse is the listener or the observer. And the hawk is uh, screeching at 3500 hertz obviously really pleased to find the mouse there so in this case you see that the 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 source is approaching the mouse which is the observer therefore the perceived frequency is going to go up and the mouse is you know just in that place really frightened not moving so the listener is not moving so therefore, the numerator, velocity of the listener is zero, but uh, in the denominator, it's going to be minus because the perceived frequency has to go higher. And I've already explained this in the last problem. Oh, so that's the frequency heard in kilohertz. It will be 3.79 times 10 to the 3 kilohertz. That should have been kilohertz okay a k there would shut that no that was right before okay sorry because i put 10 to the 3 that's 3.79 times 10 to the 3 hertz or 3.79 kilohertz okay now this is about beats what beat frequencies result if a piano hammer hits three strings that uh, emit frequencies of 127.8 128.1, 128.3. What do you know about beats? Beat frequency means the number of beats produced per second is simply the difference between the two frequencies. Now, since you have three frequencies, you're going to have multiple differences. And we always take the absolute value of the difference. So, these are the differences that are possible between each one of them taking two at a time so those are going to be the beat frequencies heard all right what is the fundamental frequency of a 0.672 meter long tube open at both ends so it's an open pipe on a day when the speed of sound is 344 meter per second and what is the frequency of its second harmonic or a fundamental frequency of an open pipe is given by actually that's a general formula for any frequency that's for the nth harmonic right if it's fundamental then n is equal to 1 Okay, so since you're asked to find the fundamental frequency, put n is equal to 1, 
344 is the velocity here, 2 times the length of the tube. Now this is so easy. And what is the frequency of its second harmonic? Now you make N2. Therefore it's going to be 2 times, uh, which is 512 hertz, because it's an open pipe. Remember that if it's a closed pipe, the next overtone will be the third harmonic, because in a closed pipe, you only get odd harmonics, and that's an important point. Okay, what length should an oboe have to produce a fundamental frequency of 110 hertz on a day when the speed of sound is 343 meter per second? It is open at both ends. Again, an open pipe and the same thing, just a repeat of what we did before. Except that this time you're trying to find the length. Again, it's fundamental frequency, so n is 1. Just rearrange and make L the subject. The frequency is given as 110. It's 1.56 meter. And that is it. And so we've come to the end of these problems. I hope you look at this carefully and try to understand how each one is worked out. And thank you and good luck.